This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy doing this quick video on something that keeps coming up in different forums and questions to me. The question that has arisen relates to well, what are these SNPs really doing for us? I've had some people say, well, how far back is each one? And that is, the, is something that not one of us can answer easily. I want to show additional information later on in this video, but right now I'm going to step up each one of these and make a statement about them. Then I'm going to talk about what the estimated time interval of where it says it is. We'll go to that next after I do this. Each one of these SNPs, this one, this one, this one, this SNP block of two, this individual SNP, the SNP block of two, and then this SNP block of three all represent a male in history. Now what is expected it also to represent is since there are three here that could be not necessarily but that could be and probably is three different men. So three different ancestors. It doesn't mean we go well this is my dad, his dad, his dad, his dad, his dad, his dad. It doesn't go that way. It could be one generation, two generations, five generations. For instance, this, this block right here, whomever this person is that has one of these two, whichever one is the leading one, also was the ancestor to my line. So the key to what I want to say in this portion of this video is that each one of these represent a male in history. It could be multiple generations, but at some point there's the first male that had this FT29222. We're still working on busting this one up. We're working to try to find testers that will help break this SNP block up. My line is 1755, so born prior to 1755 was the formation of this block section. Same thing here. This is one individual set up all of these separate lines. Five paths underneath this one individual that there's a male up there that drove every one of those lines. Now it just so happens we're in the Barton project and this particular individual here is a Barton and everybody up above this are Bartons. Each branch off of this is Bartons. Down in this section we have Wetheringtons or Worthington as it's uh, pronounced today and spelled today but it was Wetherington and then of course the McCain's which is my branch. Now let's go over to the time tree uh, to see what how this is represented. So now I'm over in the Haplo story for FTA 47557 in the discovery tool. And I'm going to go to the time tree. The reason I'm going to the time tree, I'm going to see all of them at one time instead of going on each individually. It saves you time and it allows me to represent this. And in my case, I want to shrink it all the way down. And the only thing I'm looking at is from my FT31. 1442 down to my breakout with my father and I. So I'm going to start at the bottom, which is my part of the tree, and show what the relative time statement is. This was formed around 1910. My father was born in 1924. His father was born in 1878. This one was formed between 1878 and 1924, 1910 good solid number to base it on. Then we step up to the next one. It says 1837. Here's where we stand on this one. My great grandfather was born in 1832. It's either him or his father. So one generation prior to this. Again, that's a pretty good estimation of when that was formed. You're getting the information here that there is a male that had it, either your father or your grandfather, your great-grandfather, somebody back in time formed it. In this case, I'm giving you an example. After we get out of my McCain branch, we have an individual that does not know his history. And if you look at this, this was formed in 1659. Uh, my personal opinion, uh, based on information that we've been working on in my project, 1659 is probably one generation too early or even two. We're thinking this is formed closer to the 1700 mark. And and then this one says uh, 1636. Well, this one is, the, if you notice in the chart that I showed earlier, this has two SNPs. And therefore, 1636 represents one of those two, not necessarily both of them. Uh, the 1636 is probably more accurate to this one. And then that block 
and then you look at the it's about 1700 for this one and then we step it back and this is 1556 the reason that says 1556 is very important to understand here there are two snips in this block there's only one here so this one was formed roughly 1556 we state that this block one of them was formed around 1636 so in between those two gap the gap between this one and this one could be a few generations and which would allow for this one to step back in time and that would make sense if you each break each one of them up you get that gradient uh, definition and then we step back again this is an individual we'll step back to another one says 1414 so you look at this 1556 and 1414 when this one was formed that's for my line that means it could have been five generations it gives us an idea of centuries that have passed we're talking 600 years uh, back in time from present to then when this snip would have formed and then you look at our leading one was about 1378, which is only about a generation or maybe two generations between this one and this one. Now we want, I want to note here that that's my step in time to the formation before we get into the big block group of the entire uh, project. This is just this whole section in this screen here is literally my area, quote unquote, my area of the haplo tree that's what we're looking at here and there's bound to be additional testers we just don't have represented here yet there's discussions out there in different forums hey it could be five generations six generations a thousand years in reality once you get the big Y done there's more refinement than that will it be every generation i can't say that but to say it's going to be 500 years between mutations I'm seeing too much evidence in my personal project and in other projects I'm involved in that it's going to be a lot more refined than that. You're talking several generations at most uh, that will pass between SNP formation. We just haven't got the gradient level for the number of testers uh, out there yet for e in our project or in other projects. Because if you look at the representation down here, I've been adding very deeply people into this area and getting this really refined we have a breakup to go right here <clears throat> but we also have a few people that have some private variants that could actually put some more uh, bars in this area so the more we test the more people we get to test our second cousins third cousins fourth cousins fifth cousins sixth cousins uh, whatever we can do a paper trail on and find and get it refined is what we really want to do here I wanted to show to you two things in this video. One, each one, the block does represent men or points in time when an ancestor was formed. Someone, some male in the Y-DNA tree had that for the first time. That, that is one thing I wanted to point out. Each one of them represents a male. If you have a snip block, you're wanting to bust that snip block up and find where it branches out now, the benefit for the whole, for everyone that's doing research, is that uh, we all can learn where people were, where families were, based on the ancestry trees and paper trails each one of those individuals done that match that snip block. But it also tells us, and in more a uh, holistic viewpoint, is it drives us all backwards in time to our ancestor that formed an entire tree, that ancestral Y-DNA atom. Each one of us have a path back to him. The more definition we give to all those snips that are behind us, the more we'll understand where people are. We end up finding groups in areas. As we step up, you're going to see a path back to the A Haplo group. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing right here or watching some of this other content. Let's continue learning together.